What's going on, Doombots? Today, we have Tony Scangeli's June Top 10 list. Now, a lot of shakeup again, which is always a good thing when the top 10 characters see a couple characters move around, couple shakers, new characters come out, new characters get replaced, blah, 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 blah. You know how it goes. So as a reminder, just before I go into it, for those new or for if you've seen it before, refresher, uh, just because a character on a team is good doesn't mean that the character themselves are good. For example, Sven is really good on the Frozen team. Outside of the Frozen team, Sven ain't great. So when you look at top 10 characters, you look at more than just the obvious. Uh, you look at you know what they do for their team where they're useful what they do outside of their team and if uh, they improve a team that they are placed on or if they rely on a team that kind of thing when I look at it anyway so uh, as a result we've had some shakeup we have a new bunch of new characters come in and unfortunately a couple of characters have been removed from the top 10 list from last week uh, Merlin already got kind of a little bit of the shaft from the last pass, so unfortunately he is still a good character, but no longer on the top 10 line. Uh, Dr. Facilier, unfortunately, while still a great character, ain't quite top 10 material anymore. Doesn't mean you don't work on him, doesn't mean he's not useful, just isn't among the best of the characters anymore. So let's go straight in and take a quick look at whom I think are the top 10 characters as of June 2020, starting with the number 10, kind of the same from last pass around, number 10 on this list is Simba. Uh, Simba has not changed. The things around Simba has changed, but he still represents one of the best tanks in the game at high investment. Also, a quick reminder again, if the character isn't uh, at least seven star or on their way to seven star you really don't get a feel for what they're gonna do unfortunately compared to other games uh, six and seven star matter significantly more just having a character doesn't matter so even my Simba at five star is not necessarily a great uh, representation of what a really strong symbol will do that said if you've ever fought a really strong Simba you know that it is almost impossible to kill him once he starts taking damage he takes less and less damage uh, his usability is kind of questionable, but sometimes as you build up in Sorcerer's Tournament, you may be able to put a really strong sim on defense and time your opponents out. PvP, I've been in a couple of weird hybrid matchups, uh, and of course, when you're using him as a tank for PvE content, uh, dungeon, or even at Club Conquest, uh, he represents one of the hardest to beat team characters in the game. So Simba's holding on to his top 10 slot right now, based on the fact that just what he does alone is kind of unique in that he is a tank that the more damage he takes, the less damage he takes. Uh, feel free to invest as much as you'd like into him, but just remember, even his passive says Club Wars, you don't really have to question too much about whether or not you should use him outside, but he's got a lot of value outside of that. Now, moving to number nine. I wasn't confident that I would put her on this list, but unfortunately you can't have a first legendary character come out and not mention them if they are good. So number nine on this list is Elsa. Now, uh, Elsa, uh, we're discussing her, as I said earlier, not as a member of the Frozen team. As a member of the Frozen team, she works the way she should on her team. That's good design, it makes sense that characters work on their team. On the other side, if a character doesn't really work on their team, looking at Violet from The Incredibles, uh, it's bad design, right? So Elsa does work on her team, and on her team she is among the most powerful characters in the game. That said, if you take a chance and look at what her gear is, what her stats are, you will see that her stats scale uh, pretty high compared to a lot of other characters. She requires more gear to invest to get her stronger than other characters. The damage scaling on all of her abilities are significantly higher. You do not need to use her on the Frozen team. Uh, it just makes her better. When she's doing good enough damage, you don't have to worry about the things like uh, making her become empowered. Uh, it doesn't matter. She does enough damage without it. The empowered just kind of goes with her teamwork. When you use her outside of her team, she is doing a lot of damage. And I only have a 5-star version at uh, gear tier 5, and she's still doing work against 7-star versions of characters. So I can't deny that that just power investment alone puts her in her own category. Now, she's nowhere near as powerful as some of the top 5 in the game. 
nowhere near. She doesn't offer the same thing. You don't just plop her down on the team and go, go ahead, win. You do need a little bit of work. She does need a little bit of protection. She's very squishy. Uh, she doesn't charge up, so you can't necessarily get that uh, show yourself ult with empowered on. Force of nature becomes a little bit less valuable and you don't have the sustain. So she does make top 10 right now, just based purely on her stats and how much damage she can add to a team. Uh, but in the same conversation as Simba, she is kind of a build around character. There are a couple of things you do have to pay attention to, uh, mostly protecting her or keeping her healthy with heals. So if you're gonna do your best to use her, uh, feel free to invest as much as you can. She definitely is one of the top 10 char best characters in the game, uh, both on her team and outside. Which of course will bring us to number eight. Um, not particularly shocking to a lot of people. He almost got cut completely from the list and then the last minute things around him got better. Number eight is Aladdin. Now, Tony, he wasn't the one that was reworked on his team. Correct. Aladdin hasn't gotten better or worse. He is still a top 10 character. Things around him have gotten better than him more or less, but Aladdin hasn't gotten better or worse. The fact that things around Aladdin, like his team, uh, has gotten better counts. It, he's still a very valuable and arguably important member of the Aladdin team, as it's named after him. Also, he's still a Great Kingdom character. He still has a whole bunch of positive effects going for him, Carpet being one of the best flanking attacks in the game, One Jump being a very high damage attack, and Street Right Strike, not really a big deal. He has a little bit of passive value. He is a character that you're going to get very early and you're going to work on pretty much forever and you're not going to regret it. Uh, he'll work great with Sean Yu, he'll work great on the Aladdin team, he's great in the villain character. He's a great standalone single target damage dealer. Uh, not the best, obviously, but comparatively, I don't think you're going to find many other characters that do what Aladdin does. I would argue that of the 60 some odd characters that are currently available in the game, I don't think you can find 55 that are better than what Aladdin does. So Aladdin makes the top 10 again based on the strength of the fact that his entire team uh, got reworked and is now uh, incredibly awesome. Uh, that said, none of the other characters that got reworked have made it to the top 10 list, mostly because none of them are that good. Uh, that said, again, Jasmine single-handedly got the best rework so far that we've ever seen in the game. Uh, and as a result of that, Aladdin got stronger. Because now when Aladdin calls her for an assist, it's better. And now when she calls for Aladdin assist, it's just as good as it was, but she won't die immediately. So, Aladdin, number eight, no question there. Uh, we are now getting into the nitpicky parts where someone's going to be like, I think this person is higher, or whatever. And uh, I don't really care. This is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. You can just think I'm an idiot, and that's fine. We're going to go straight into number seven, and number seven is Mordu. Now, uh, Mordu got a huge boost. He was starting to slide off the top list, uh, but he got a huge boost when they nerfed the Iago spell, making it significantly harder to take taunt off of characters. Because you can't take taunt off characters, because Mordu does a ton of damage for a tank, and because now he is going to taunt for a very long time, Mordu has stabilized his top 10 slot. Uh, not quite top 5, but close enough. Uh, he is still a great investment, and now that we're needing more and more Wilds characters, I think that anyone who did invest in Mordu is not going to regret it. He is not among the most unique characters in the game uh, but what he does is again another example of taking a class of character usually a protector or a defensive styled character and pushing them to make them do more damage and have more control he has a stun he has some slows he has offenses down he counterattacks. everything he does kind of lines up the fact that he has push stats pushed meaning duh huge huge boost so Mordu holding on to his his top 10 slots sliding a little bit but now totally worthwhile investment throughout the course of the game I wouldn't necessarily say over other characters but listen just because you can't get a character doesn't mean they're not great just because I can't finish a character doesn't mean I don't respect them Mordu deserves the respect of the players in the game and the higher he is the more you should fear him 
Uh, that said, we can go straight into number six, another new character. Uh, might get a little bit of pushback on this one too, but I think if you're pushing back, you just haven't used her enough. So number six on this list is Anna. Now, in my previous video, when I was speculating on the team, I noticed Anna had some really cool abilities. Mainly, she's a kingdom character, and her special gave out energy. What I didn't notice is all of the good things she does has nothing to do with being on the Frozen team. Fierce Flame. Deal damage. If assisting teammate is frozen, they gain offense up. Okay, that's cool. Doesn't matter. Basic attacks are always basic attacks. Doesn't make too much of a difference. No real worry there. But oh, what's this? Some things never change. Grant haste to self and adjacent teammates for two turns. Increase speed meter of adjacent teammates by 30% and an additional 5% per helpful effect affecting them. Grant one magic ability for adjacent teammates. This ability is probably one of the best abilities in the game. Hands down, no questions asked. This ability giving out speed plus energy, magic plus uh, turn meter, <laughs> like, and haste, come on. Like, you can put her on any team. On the Kingdom team, she's amazing. On the Downtown Villains team, she's amazing. She flexes every team. Every team. She flexes anywhere. Uh, and that alone is great. Now, the problem is she doesn't really do much damage. She is functionally a support character. She supports uh, better characters. What she does is good and does help them a lot, but that's pretty much it. She's, a, she's like the new Merlin. If, Previously, we had Merwin on this list because of how he was able to uh, work as a support character. Uh, Anna does what Merwin does, just a little bit better, and has the added benefit of having a baseline home on the Frozen team, and has an added benefit of being used to unlock Elsa. Uh, she's not quite top five. She would need to have a little bit more damage in her kit to, to break that open, and, and I don't think that's necessarily possible. Uh, obviously, she's one of the top five Frozen characters. <laughs> I'm so funny. Anyway, she's she's close. She's so close. Uh, her leadership ability, clearly useless outside of the Frozen team. Uh, this way, guys. Mm, the speed meter decrease is okay, but it's never doing major damage. You don't even get increased versions of it as you upgrade. So she is a utility character. It just so happens that because of that kingdom tag right there, She's a utility character on the best team in the game. Still, the kingdom team. Fight me. So, Anna holds number six, which of course leads us to the top five, which of course has not changed uh, pretty much at all. However, there was a tiny little shift in order. You'll see. Going to number five, uh, a lot of people have fought me back on this one. Uh, I still think they're wrong. Number five is... Hades. Again, reminder, Hades is completely useless uh, until he's maxed out. Hades is relatively useless until he's at least gear tier 6, 6 star, level 60. He's not great. I rarely use him. I rarely do. Then you face off against a gear tier 7, 7 star Hades with your entire 7 star team. And he murders everybody because he's so fast, because he does so much AoE damage. He is the prince of AoE in this game. If yours isn't, he's not invested enough. There are some things you just can't deny, and one of those things is pure numbers. Hades is fast, Hades does a ton of AoE damage, and whether or not he dies quickly uh, is irrelevant, because if Hades is dying quickly, that means other characters on your team isn't. He is not the character that you necessarily anchor an entire team around. He is one of the best because uh, when it comes to AoE damage, there is absolutely positively no one that beats him on that. Even Dash's ult is arguably worse than the pure amount of AoE damage Hades presents. So, number five, Hades. I don't think a lot of people are going to disagree with that. That said, do not farm him early because like I said, he really only breaks in the end game. The faster you farm him to break, you're still not building characters that will help you in relative game modes. Uh, he does an end game character for what it's worth. And realistically, if there's a Hercules event, there will probably be a boost to drop for Hades overall. So don't farm him early. Just farm him after you've gotten your Sean Yu going, etc., etc. Uh, moving to number four, a uh, really unfortunate slide for one of my favorite characters in this game. Number four, the BB dubs. Now, we're not going to argue 
that BB Dubs doesn't do damage because BB Dubs does a lot of damage. We're not going to argue that he's not useful in pretty much every game mode under the sun that currently exists and that could ever exist. We're not. We're not going to argue that he's pretty good at executing named characters that are good guys. When all of his attacks do boosted damage, he's always putting offense down. The issue here is that the Frozen team has come out. And the Frozen team itself is faster than BB Dubs. So now there's about 17 characters in the game faster than BB Dubs. And during the course of that, he might die. So he's lost a little bit of his luster when it comes to using him um, in endgame content. That doesn't change the fact that he still does all of the damage. Doesn't change the fact that the stronger he is, the easier you're going to do when it comes to the gold challenge or unlocking Zerg. Doesn't change the fact that you're going to get an infinite amount of value on him on the Downtown Villains team, on Hybrids teams. He is still an amazing AoE damage dealer with some pretty good single target attacks that is going to help you throughout the entire game. Do not regret in any investment you have in BB Dubs. That said, He's not number two anymore. He's not holding the weight. Characters are better. Doesn't mean anything bad for him, just means better characters have come up or things have changed and that's been relevant. Speaking of things that changed, last time there was somebody else holding this spot down. He moved up, coming in number three, hot as he can. Big Daddy Zerg. Emperor Zerg is the number one or number two most subbed in character on the Frozen team. Dash and Emperor Zerg. Some people think Dash is better than Emperor Zerg. It really depends. Um, Zerg still holds the title of the absolute, positively, best single target damage dealer in the game. That's it. No one does better single target damage than Zerg at parity. Obviously, if someone's invested more than Zerg, they might do more. But once, if you're comparing all things equal, Zerg does more damage. So. How does Zerg do more damage? Uh, simple. He is quick. If people try to hit him early or AoE casually gives him offense up, he will absolutely take threats out. And that's one of the things that are very important. The fact that he's on a team, uh, two teams specifically, Downtown Villains and or the uh, Toy Story team, uh, help him a lot. The fact that he doesn't ever have to be on any one team, you could just plop him down, set him and forget him, walk away, huge. Uh, when you have a character that does that much damage, it's really, really, really hard to worry about some of the other stats. Now, if BBW's damage was a little bit more, he'd be basically as strong as Zerg. He's not. If Hades was uh, a little bit less squishy, he'd be as strong as Zerg. He's not. Zerg's got a little bit of extra hit points going on, a little bit of higher defense, and the best single target damage in the game. How relevant single target is for you? Depends how quickly you can get Olaf or Sven down when you're fighting Frozen. I know I need him. So, Zerg's at number three, uh, which of course leaves only two characters, and surprise, surprise, I'm pretty sure you already know who they are. The question is, do you know the order? If you're watching this video, yes you do. Coming in, number two is Dash. Now, some people think Dash is the best character in this game. Those people are wrong. So simple. Your opinion is wrong. I know some people say your opinions can't be wrong, but those people never saw someone say Dash is the best character in the game. It's first time ever. First time for anything. Dash is not the best character in the game. He is the second best character in the game. And it's not very, uh, it's not very big a distinction. Like, you're not going to regret any investment you have in Dash. Single target, pretty good damage. AoE, pretty good damage. Hard to kill. Yeah, I'm up there. Fast, absolutely. Hey, I have a speed stone on him. I need him faster because speed stones are stupid and putting him in this game is stupid and glue is stupid. Doesn't matter. Dash isn't crazy. He's crazy. And if you can get him, get him. You have to mortgage your house? Don't worry about it. It's a video game. You don't need him that badly. But he is very, very useful. Like I said, he's the number one character people sub in on the Frozen team in lieu of Olaf. I don't think they need to. But until you're, oh, at, Olaf does need a little bit of investment to get the Frozen team going because he's slow and you need to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, so while you work on Olaf, feel free to go ahead and put in Dash or Zerg. Shouldn't be a problem. Or the number one character. But I really don't have to say anything else. It's been two months, give or take, since Dash has come out. Y'all know how good Dash is. Come on. But of course, that doesn't make him the best character in the game, because the best character in the game, even today, three months in, the number one character in this game is still Sean Yu. 
Why? You gotta ask that question. You can't afford it. Sean Yu makes every character uh, on the Kingdom team better. Sean Yu makes Yizma a better character. She takes two turns before she dies instead of one. That's better. Sean Yu is a linchpin to success for a bunch of mediocre characters, for a handful of great characters. Sean Yu is an absolutely phenomenal fifth member of the Frozen team while you're working on Olaf or Sven, because at least one of those characters is Kingdom. And either way, he does amazing damage. Sean Yu has push damage. Sean Yu has good AoE damage. Sean Yu has good single target damage. Sean Yu takes extra turns. He's very fast. He makes other people faster. Everything Sean Yu does is the exact kind of thing you want to do in this game. That's it. No other way to slice it. Everything you put into Sean Yu will pay you dividends in many different game modes. You will get uh, more access to anything that requires Kingdom characters. You will be able to clear tower easier. You will be able to win in PvP and Sorcerer's Tournament early while you're building up other characters. You will literally never have any regret in any investment you've ever put in Sean Yu from day one you start playing to the last day when you decide to quit. Sean Yu, as of right now, is the best character in the game, bar none, hands down. Sean Yu is almost or as good as Elsa on a complete maxed out Frozen team. The difference between them is if I can make that statement, and even if Elsa is better, that takes five characters to make Elsa better than one character who's just great. Arguments can't be made. Sean Yu's the best character in the game, Never regret any investment in him. Kingdom is still the best team in the game. Never regret any investment in them. As we see, get, we get more and more Kingdom characters. Surprise, surprise. They're going to be added to the team. Uh, Shan Yu works great with Mulan. Shan Yu works great with Anna. Shan Yu works great with Aladdin and Jasmine, both of which have been reworked. Surprise, surprise. He's a great character. So that's it. That's the top 10 list. Comment below and let me know what you think. Obviously, if you're going to argue about numbers and stuff, I uh, don't care. You shouldn't either. If you're arguing about someone who should be on the list that isn't, that's totally different and I totally respect that. Please, by all means, tell me if you think I missed a character. Um, that'd be interesting. But other than that, I've got nothing else to say. So have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjili, and I'll catch you later. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that video. Uh, real quick, a couple of these videos you're going to see at the end of my DSA content for the next week or two. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, James Runyon, has started a... GoFundMe for uh, charity, and the charity is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 1-800-THE-LOST, or 1-800-843-5678. Please, um, as a result of Rapunzel, you know, not currently being in DSA, uh, and in a way to bring some positive uh, anything into the world right now, it is basically an attempt to raise about $1,800 for missing and exploited children, uh, $100 for every year Rapunzel was locked in her tower. I know it's a little kitschy, but I believe it's truly a good cause, so if you are capable and are interested uh, in the links below, there is the link to the description. It's also a pinned comment. Uh, feel free to donate if you are interested at all. Obviously, it would be great to get Rapunzel in DSA, but I think that any uh, charity, especially in these trying times, um, would be helpful. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.